right, settle on in. And we can explore here for a bit this morning and bring our awareness and our consciousness and our curiosity to this rich dynamic of, of humanity, the experience of a eternal spirit, you know, embodied in a, in a current human condition. And what a, what a beautiful and uh, mysterious and um, dynamic experience that is and how precious it all is. So we can play with that today. All right, let me turn down the music here. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to have you all here. And it's good to be here myself with you. It's a, it's a blessing and it's a really, it's a beautiful part of my week to, uh, to come and, and sit in, in presence and in some deeper contemplation and really to feel within and feel what's happening, what's, what's unfolding, what's revealing itself. And uh, it, it, as it, it reveals it, as it reveals itself to me in this consciousness, then to, to explore and play with and feel into community and wanting to explore this within a conscious community. Um, logistics. Um, so uh, I, again, I posted in the little chat room, uh, if anyone is interested in and, and has the ability and uh, it feels compelled or uh, desirous of sharing any donations, those are always valuable, just to help um, support uh, the equipment and the efforts and the, the um, just the putting together of, of this share, which is uh, just really a, a, a donation, a gift of, of love. If you're, I've, I'm going to record this and then later on I'll probably upload it. In fact, I will upload it to YouTube. So if you're currently watching this on YouTube, it's a recording and you, you enjoy the experience and there's something of value in it for you, feel free to please give it a thumbs up so that it makes it more available to others. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. So I don't know where this will all go today, but I've got a pretty clear sense of, of where it begins. I have been watching, I have, and I think, I'm sure we all have, I have been witnessing in others and in myself this tremendous struggle and uh, angst and difficulty with being I so identified within the ego body, within the story of self, within the personal identity that is there and, and, and a part of this life, this experience. But to watch this, this experience of only being identified with that and so controlled by that, by our wounding, by our programming, by our conditioning, by all the, the thoughts and the directions and the um, protestations of the, of the ego mind guiding our actions and our, and our experiences and our relationships. I've watched relationships fall apart. I've watched marriages really struggle, friendships, engagements out in the world. There's so much ego body jockeying for position and jockeying for, for all these egos, trying to find comfort, trying to, to have a sense of safety. And, and projecting the fear and the pain and the difficulty into the world, rather than using all the opportunities available to us today to feel our pain, to feel our wounding, to feel our fear, to feel our difficulty. And instead of having that be a, um, having that invoke a reaction out into the world, learning to let that 
pain, that fear, that uncertainty, that lack, that sense of I don't feel safe. And let that point us within, let us, let that initially point us within to a stillness and to a self-reflection of what's happening in here. What part of my child is, is, is being, my wounded child is afraid. One of the most beautiful moments in my life was a, a moment in a, in a church I was visiting in San Diego. Um, and Church of Religious Science, I think, it was in Hillcrest. And there was a guest minister. And she said, when some version of, when we are disconnected from our divine truth, from the divinity of us, when we are disconnected from the divine, we will feel not enough. We will feel separate. We will feel the illusion of separation. We'll feel the illusion of smallness. We'll feel the illusion of, of, of other than. We'll forget our unity. We'll, we'll definitely forget the grace that we are. The imperishable and rested grace that is the nature of consciousness itself. It's the nature of our beingness, the ground of being within which we have a, a, a human experience. We have experiences that are largely happening in our mind. Every experience is taking in an event, an experience, a condition, and working with it and telling a story and having an experience. It's like a movie playing, but all of that is happening upon the, the movies playing upon a pure, bright, brilliant screen that is unmoved. The grace of our being, the, the grounded nature of being is God consciousness. It is that just beautiful God consciousness. And when we forget that, then we're only in the story. We're only in the experience. So this time, I'm, I'm really hopeful that more and more we all get to take this opportunity to meet our shadows, to meet our pain, to meet our wounding, to meet our conditioning, to meet our, our programming, to meet all the, all the parts of ourselves that feel so alone and separate and scared and divided, that we can meet that within. And we can look at all of these experiences as a gift to recognize that when somebody really pisses me off, that they're just pointing to my sense of fear. They're just pointing to something within me that feels small and feels separate and needs to defend and needs to blame. So if we're triggered a lot these days, all the more reason to have this practice, to have this practice of inquiring within and saying, what is this ground of being behind my thoughts, my experiences, my opinions, my judgments, my, my conditioning, my programming, is all of that is unfolding as the movie, as the coloring of consciousness, one might say is the coloring of experience that comes and goes, that arises and passes. What is the imperishable grace of being that is unmoving, that is always there as the experience of my fear arises and hopefully can be met and can be loved from this ground of being to rest in the ground of beingness, the ground of the grace of God consciousness, to rest in that and then be present, be beautifully present to my own pain and my own fears and my own difficulties. And then to perhaps look at what, quote, caused my pain 
or what I thought was the source of my pain, this other person, this other, this experience, this other opinion, and to be in that place of gratitude and thankfulness, that that was a gift that allowed me, if I chose, to look within and say, what still feels afraid? What still feels separate? And I'm reminded of it again and again. I was reminded again this morning. A dear, dear friend just reminded me, don't come on, hold on, don't, don't collapse into the projections. Don't collapse into the us and them. Don't collapse into the right and wrong of it all. We're all evolving beyond this. We all have the opportunity. The awakening now is the opportunity for every one of us to claim, to know, to allow the God consciousness that is actually the, the beingness of consciousness itself that we are. To re learn and feel and allow and invite and, and become familiar with what that is so that it is available to us, it awakens to itself. And that awakened consciousness is then available as a place to rest and, and, and fall back into so we can examine and be with our pain and our fear and our blame or our anxiety so that we can meet it. And we can actually bring the love that we truly are to our pain. That's the healing. That's the opportunity that we all have right now. What a beautiful opportunity to have so much turmoil and angst and chaos and uncertainty and division and separation so that we can see it, so that it can trigger within us what wants to be looked at and loved. So I had this vision this morning of the classic God looking down upon the world. So there's this benevolent love, benevolent grace, looking down upon all these ego bodies, all these, these illusions of separation, jockeying about for position to get their wounding met, to get their conditioning met everyone living in their wounding, in their fear, in their pain, believing that is them, and God looking down and watching this mess <laughs> unfold, all these positions <laughs> jockeying about. And we hold that sense of separation, we hold that sense of oftentimes that's other than me. I'm the story, I'm my pain, I'm my, I'm my, my opinions, I'm my judgments, I'm my positioning. That's what I am, and, and I'm and I'm and I'm gonna fight for that, and I'm gonna make you wrong for being your opinion and your your other way of being, and that all that's happening, and we we have the sense of this grace being other than, and the vision held of inviting that grace quote down. And recognizing that that's us. That's the unity consciousness. That's the one consciousness that is, that is modulated through each of our individuated soul expressions. It's not other than. It's all there is. We're just modulations of that. So to accept that, to bring that grace of God consciousness into our own reality to let it merge, to let it be present with the ego body, with the dreamed self. So that we're watching the movie, we're experiencing the movie, we're experiencing the, the experience, but that's not all there is. There's the knowing of the experience, this grace, this graceful, beingness, the ground of being that is knowing the pain, the joy, the, the fears, the loves, all the different dynamics. 
is being held in this imperishable, unmoving grace. May we know that as us and not separate from. So what do we want to explore today? What do we want to look at and feel into and invite and share around our own experiences of where we get triggered and where we collapse back into the, into the dream and we forget that the dreamer is love. The dreamer is okay. It helps to explore it. it that's, the, that's the inquiry, that's where we sit. We sit in this exploration, in this discovery of the awakening of consciousness. And, and, and as consciousness awakens to itself, as itself, it helps to explore and talk about and feel into, wait, wait, what is this? What, what is happening? What is the nature of reality? And when I listen to my teachers like Rupert Spira, who's been a wonderful teacher for me, he's my most, probably my most prominent teacher right now, that every time I listen and I go, oh, that's how it's working. That, all right, thank you. It's, we objectify things. We need to objectify things with words and concepts for the mind to kind of get it. And then the mind allows that concept to be felt in the, in the sensational experience. So to listen to a teaching and then to take that into meditation, that's what we talked about last week, that we take whatever the one thing is that's resonating right now that says, oh, that gem, that just unlocked a sense of peace. It, that I feel like I've the pointing just pointed to something that I've been allowing that's been awakening. Ooh, and it just awakened a little bit more. And to sit in a meditation, that's what I did last night after listening to Rupert, I just went and sat in a meditation and felt into, oh, The experiences are a coloring of pure consciousness. And that coloring changes and shifts and comes and goes and moves. And not to forget the unmoving within which the movement of life occurs. So that was a huge grace and an opening and, and allowing to look at the things I'm working on. And I'll say one more thing here, perhaps before we, we open it up or as we open it up. The value of, of coming to rest in this beautiful grace of, of being, this pure consciousness, is so that we can be with our conditioning and our wounding and our shadow and our stories. And so we can be with it and start to let it go and release and relax and untangle gently with grace, as grace. Because if we don't have that, if all we are is in the story, trying to dismantle the story, in the story, in the pain, in the wounding, as the wounding, trying to let it go, it's hard to let go of something that you are identified as. So to, to allow this rested, imperishable, uh, unperturbed grace, and from there to meet with compassion and love, and, and presence, the experience of mind, the experience of our story, the experiences that, that bring up our, our egoic identity and engage our egoic identity. If we're only in that, 
than trying to work with it and struggle with it and get it to behave and calm down and to while we're in it identified as it it's really hard to totally let go of something or dismantle something or let something drop away that we're identified as that we're in So that's the value of sitting in our inquiries to say, what is this nature of beingness? What is this ground of being? Like the sky, witnessing clouds, witnessing storms, wit witnessing emotions, witnessing sensations, perceptions, thoughts, that all are coming and going, arising and passing appearing and disappearing. And if all that were to, even for a few moments, disappear, what would be left? That's the inquiry. What would be left? What would be there? <laughs> This immediate freedom of grace. It's like, wow, if all that stopped, not that it just will, I mean, it, it's part of this life that we're moving through and feeling into our conditioning and our stories. But if it did, if it all just stopped, what would be there? That which we're looking for. We are that which we're looking for. It's already there. So it's, it's revealed. It's not discovered, it's not created. That grace, that peace, that love is not created. It is not discovered, it is not found. It's there, it's revealed. But we have to look for it. We have to point our awareness with an inquiry. Say, what is, what would be there, what would be there? If I wasn't so in my mind and in my story and in my dream of self. If I woke up from that, it's like waking up from a dream at night. If I woke up from a dream, what would be the dreamer? What would be the nature of dreamer? Whew. So it's such a beautiful opportunity we have now. Man, I've been feeling my anger. I've been feeling my derision. I've been feeling my fear, my confusion. One of my oldest wounds, one of my deepest wounds is I don't trust people. People scare the shit out of me. Because I've, I've, I've had enough pain at the hands of people. So to meet that and to find this grace that isn't scared of people, to find this grace that is just presence and love and strength and, and unity. So what a beautiful opportunity we have right now to feel all of the stuff that freaks us out and to not make the others wrong for triggering that, but recognize that my pain, you are not the source of my pain. To look out into the world and say, you are not the source of my pain. You are the gift that is triggering my pain and showing it to me so that I might meet it and love it and let it go. Imagine if we all did that. <laughs> Imagine if we all did that. All took responsibility to say, that's my pain, my fear, my anger, my lack of self-worth. And to look at it and feel it and recognize it's just part of the programming and it's not us. Not the true I amness of being. Whew. 
And that's the peace. That's where the peace resides. The peace doesn't reside in never being disturbed. The peace doesn't reside in never being upset or agitated or scared or angry or blaming or shaming. That's not, the peace isn't that. The peace is being able to notice when that occurs and to not collapse into it, not let it take us, not let us pull us down into the story. And not to deny that it's happening, but to rest in the grace of being and meet, oh, this thing, oh, there's another part of my wounding. And that's the separation, to be able to feel those things and ask, who's really angry right now? Who's really um, uh, scared right now? Who's, who's the opinionated one right now? Who's the one who's so much in judgment? And to be able to be in that God consciousness and pull that into our being and have that meet the opinion, the opinions and the judgments and the fears and say, oh, truly we are God consciousness manifest and meeting the conditions of mind. I'm not the mind. I'm the grace. We are the grace. There is only grace. Yeah, it's so fun sharing this. Thank you for being here. It's so beautiful to share this within community. Is there anything that anyone wants to, to share, to explore, to uh, point at and ponder and look at? That's why we, we look at stillness. It's a wonderful practice to allow our sense of agitation not to move us into action or reaction, but to let our sense of agitation move us into stillness. because that's where we find the grace, that's where we find the beingness that already exists. And then to inquire, and if we want to do our personal development work, to move into that stillness and then say, what is the true source of my agitation? Hmm. Hard to do when, when we're identified with the agitation as the agitation. But again, that vision of the, the, the God consciousness looking down on all these ego bodies jockeying for position, trying to get their conditioning met. To pull that into one experience, to pull that into the singular experience of being and be able to meet the stuff that arises and the pains that arise and have them both be present. There's the pain embedded in the experience, embedded in my mind and my stories and my opinions and my conditioning. There's that. And there's the consciousness, the purity of being. There's both as one in one. They're both playing out in the exact same consciousness. There's no separation there, really. Everything is playing out on the, on the, in, in the knowing, in the uh, knowing, in the awareness. There's all these different things that are known. There's one knowing. And the knowing doesn't move. 
an opinion comes and goes within the unmoving knowing. Question, ah, are you asking us to share? I'm not sure, ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, 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 I am, I am, I am. Um, how do we proceed? Yay. Um, so if you wanna share, you can unmute your mic uh, or just uh, let me know and I'll, I'll unmute your mic for you. So is there anyone who would like to share? Yay, okay. Yeah, yeah I unmuted. Hi, Vishali. Hello, Chess. How are you? Thank you for this. Yeah, it's very, it's, yeah, it, no, it, it's wonderful what you're doing and what you're saying because even those of us, this is a perfect opportunity for all our junk to be seen. And the, the balance sometimes is, um, you know, when do you, <coughs> excuse me, when do I um, choose to engage Facebook or not. And the fact is, is that that's one big, huge, massive ego mess of opinions that really, no matter what I share is irrelevant to my own state, mm. you know? And so what I, so what I, you know, it's not about changing the world. It's about waking up from the world. And so when I, but, I, but and I still sometimes as, as you, what you're showing about your own process, find myself getting triggered about what I would consider common sense, yeah. you know, um, because I was a registered nurse for 35 years and the whole battle about the masks is what really gets me triggered. Me you know? and, and it's really funny because we learned this crap in third grade, you know, so it's like, how do you not get that? Oh, you, you froze. So, so anyways, oh, there you are. Get in there with my, with my wanting to make sense of it all, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, am I frozen still? No, no, you're Am I back? You're back. Okay. So, so, you know, so there's that balance for me. I mean, I noticed that I stopped sharing on Facebook, I have to say 95%, uh, because no matter what you put on there, even if it's neutral, you're going to have a thousand egos jumping in on it. And it's like, wow, it doesn't really matter. People are just ready to fight. Yeah. And that's, and do and that's my own fight. That level. Yeah. And that's my, and that's my own inner fight, you know? So, um, you know, if, if I, if that triggers me, but I just like, when do I share at all or when do I not, or just leave the whole thing alone? Well, that's a, that's such a beautiful question, isn't it? That sense of, all right, I do live in the world of form. I live, yeah, I live in the I live in this world of consequence, uh -huh. um, and so the 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 allowing aspect doesn't mean we don't ever take action. Um, the way I've been feeling into it recently is that just like nature always tries to find balance, right? Nature will always try. If if nature is disturbed, then nature will come back. So when love is disturbed, there are some there are some inherent qualities to this to God consciousness, to grace, to being, and we name them as best we can. So love, compassion, consideration, kindness, um, empathy. So when we find that that feels out of balance, when we're arrested in a, in a in a grace and we encounter an ego body that is acting in a way or behaving in a way that really seems to be counter to a sense of unity, then we will probably want to take some action. We'll probably want to engage in some way. This is just consciousness. Like take the person out of it, take the ego out of it. And consciousness, love is seeking to bring love back to, to find where love has been um, diminished or clouded over or disturbed, just like nature. And it tries to bring love back into the disturbance. It tries to uh, bring like light back into the shadow. Does that resonate? Sure. I mean, yeah, yes, you know, sure. It's, it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, we do seem to live here. We do need to, we can, if we choose to engage from 
a heartfelt place is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, from from just what 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 would love do, and it doesn't mean love would that the idea of allowing, and I, I know you know this, Vishali, so we're just going to share it together uh, broadly. Yeah. Is that um, the idea of allowing is is like oh, so you just allow things. So if somebody's kicking a puppy while you're walking by, you just allow it because you, you know I'm just allowing stuff. No, that there would be that that recognition of this is this is an aberration of love there's 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 uh, and and love wants to be brought back into balance it wants to be fulfilled so to take the action but not to take it from hate and not to take it from assuaging our fear and assuaging our sense of separation right that's the idea to be in our wholeness and allow that wholeness to take action not taking the action to try to come back to our wholeness to try to correct an imbalance that just happens to be frightening our, our wounded child. Um, no, absolutely. And, and I've even noticed that when, no matter how, I want to say neutral, because I, I, I don't want to inflame. It's not about that. It's not coming from my wounded child. It's coming from, hey, guys, you know, this is Science 101 about the masks. I get it. You know, I get that you don't think, whatever the, my issue might be with that. Um, and even as neutral as I am about it, it's like um, the, the response is not, the response is so, I mean, people are so polarized that they can even fight about something like that, that I, I begin to wonder my, the, the virtue of even bringing love into balance in that way. You know, it's like, because I do think people are just, from my point of view, I do think people are disseminating such falsities that they, are uh, in this pandemic is not a wise idea, right? You know, um, and but they're not interested in hearing science that they learned in third grade, right? So we get to choose, and this is what I was reminded of this morning. So my dear friend reminded me this morning that, for me at least, it feels more important right now to keep resting in the grace and mm -hmm. and doing what i can to emanate and be in that space rather than to get involved in the in some of the battles for yeah. others being involved in the battles is that's their way of being and can they do so from the most heartful and and god consciousness place that they can but i was just reminded it was like yeah, I want to get drawn into this too because I'm scared, because there's a sense of ignorance scares the shit out of me. And can I meet that and can I, or what I call ignorance. So can I meet that and can I rest in saying maybe my role right now is to exude and exemplify and, and not be in the uh, love and not be in the opinion game and not to be in the, this is how to be a better person game right yeah yeah it's yeah thanks beautiful thank you that's yeah. what i love about these shares is because we so talk for, about it, we're like oh yeah that's what i got to do more of <laughs> we, we, you know it's really interesting and then i'll let you hit up to somebody else with a question that just how the ego really is so wonderfully adept at dragging us back in Mm -hmm. You know, even as it's drag, even as it's, you're, I'm being pulled back in, I know I'm being pulled back in. And, and there is that, that balance of like, like, nope, I'm not talking to you right now, you know, and, um, but it's, it's such a trickster. It is. And that's why we do have our practices for awakening pure consciousness and returning to it again and again and yeah, again. again. <laughs> so that, so that like last night in my meditation, it became more alive and more present and more lasting and more enduring than it had before. Because every time it just, it, it, that realization of, yes, this is, this is the beingness. There's such grace here. Yeah. So that when the story, when the dream activates, which is all the damn time, we can be in it and not be collapsed in it. It's lucid dreaming. It's, it's yes, I'm in the experience of life. I'm the movies playing, but I don't ever forget Well, I do forget, but less and less do I forget that the movie is playing and the screen is unstained, un unchanged by whatever movie is playing. The God consciousness is not stained 
and not in, uh, in, uh, perturbed by the movie, no matter what's playing. So yeah. I awaken the screen, I awaken the screen, I awaken the screen again and again and again. And now I can watch the movie knowing at the exact same time that the screen is present. But if I don't meditate for four or five days or a day, I start to fall back into the, into the experience. Purely only as the experience, the experience is, is rich and is dynamic, but I fall into only being in the experience and forgetting the, the grace. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now there's another question. It's a balance between sharing your truth and leaving it alone. The hard part for me is many quote conscious community people are advocating for no masks. I feel shocked and confused and angry, but the action, what does that look like? Well, probably whatever that action looks like, if the action is invoked, is prompted, is coming from the confused and shocked and angry, not that those aren't happening, but there's something else happening at the same time. There's the grace of being, which is also happening. It's never not happening. It's always there. But if we're only purely, thoroughly, 100% in the experience in the movie and forgetting the grace, then whatever action is taken, if it's taken directly from shocked and confused and angry, it's going to be a collapsed, it's going to be an action that is collapsed in ego bodies, jockeying for right and wrong and, and safety. Yeah. So the action can, can, can still be kind of the same action. It just has a completely different quality around it. It has a different flavor, a different uh, inspiration, a different goal. When we're shocked and confused and angry and we come from that, the goal is to assuage or to mod mollify or to change the world so that we could, don't have to be shocked and confused and angry anymore. I mean, really, I mean, it can, you know, it's a big question, but like, what would, what would the love of God do? Grace, beingness, the ground of being is fine. It's at peace. And it, and, it, and it may look and see where there is illusion, where there's derision, where there is not love, where there's unkindness, where there's not compassion. And it might try to bring that, bring more compassion, bring more love, bring more awareness, bring more consideration, community, kindness. And to recognize that no matter how much you shine the light into some areas of darkness, the darkness isn't ready to receive the light. But if we rest in that place of going until everyone gets it, I mean, this has been my thing. As soon as every person in the world stops being a bully, stops being mean, stops being uh, uh, aggressive, until all of that is healed, I won't be safe. <laughs> Oh my God, I know I am safe. The, the ground of being is safe. And now I can go meet the world. We can go meet the world and try to bring more love and compassion and awareness and unity and, and love. But if we come from a place of separation and fear and anxiety, then all we're doing is we're taking action to try to mollify that sense of fear and anxiety. That's not anyone's job. That's our own awakening does that. Does, I hope that that resonates or makes sense. 
Such good questions, and that's what these times are about. That's what the opportunity right now is. It's been unfolding for years, the divisions, the opinions, the judgments, the pains, the fears. Our fears have been shown to us. Our wounding has been shown to us. Our lack of sense of safety has been shown to us. Our sense of smallness and separation has been shown to us. And as that beautiful minister said years ago, when we are disconnected from our divine truth, we will feel not enough. And that not enoughness will act in all manner of small and divisive and angry and blaming and shaming ways. If we're not practicing, if we're not awakening again and again and again, the dreamer, the, the pure awake consciousness within which this dream of self is unfolding. If we're not over and over and over again, waking up and recognizing, oh, the, the ground of being, this pure grace, this pure, presence of love that is behind the entire coming and going of everything. It's the, the screen and the, and the movie of life is playing out. If we don't keep awakening to the presence of consciousness, the presence of loving awareness as us, then the natural way is we will collapse back into the dream because it's so compelling. It's the world of form and activity and actions and things happening. It's the experience. This is what Rupert was talking about last night. We get enamored with the experience and we get so compelled by and transfixed by and collapsed into the pure experience. We forget that the, all the experiences are coming and going. The experience of a thought arising the experience of a, an emotion arising and passing. We're so transfixed and collapsed into the experience, we forget the experiencer. We forget the unified presence of love within which all experience comes and goes. We're trying to work the experience so hard. <laughs> We're trying to get the experience to behave in a way that mollifies our conditioning and our fears. And that's never gonna work. It's never gonna fully behave. but awakening to that which is, always has been and always will be. That doesn't go away. It's always present. So can we live in that and as that and allow that awakening of consciousness to itself to be present within this human experience as the background, as the unchanging knowingness, beingness, awareness, consciousness, and awaken that and be in that and rest in that, and then participate in this beautiful life from love, from grace, as grace, as love, and see what that looks like. It's different. It's different than coming from changing the world because the world is fearful to our wounded self or our separate self. Thank you. Hi, Dolph. Hi, Jess. Good to see you. Your, your, your voice, every time I hear your voice, Dolph, I just feel like, oh, 
I'm okay. I'm at peace. I'm 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 loved. <laughs> you are loved. Uh, it's good to hear you. Um, I guess I I wanted to explore with you some interesting derivatives from what we've been talking about or what you've been talking about this morning. One thing I've noticed about myself is I think I'm pretty good when I'm out there in the world. Uh, we were talking earlier about this question about who wears a mask and who doesn't. And I think I, I'm managing that fairly well. Part of what helped me with that was I recently looked at a YouTube video. It was an interview with the uh, physician and author Atul Gawande. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know his work, but he's a physician scientist. And he said, if only 60% of the people wear masks, this will go down. We will win against this coronavirus. And that was reassuring. Obviously, if it was 100%, it would be much better. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be okay collectively if even just 60% of the people do that. And he was saying, you don't need to be militant about that with others. And you don't need to get engaged in controversial conversations with people who believe otherwise, as long as most of us do it, it's going to, we're going to win. Um, but I guess I wanted to out myself a little bit. I have a guilty pleasure that I want to confess. <laughs> And it's, it's that one of the things that brings me great satisfaction is to watch late night talk show hosts criticize people who are, from my point of view, mm -hmm. ignorant and aren't making choices that protect us all from this thing, right? And so I'll watch Stephen Colbert and... And, um, you know, he's sarcastic and critical and snarky. And, and I take great pleasure from it, <laughs> right? And it's, it's as though I, w I guess it's a, an unlived part of me that I, that I vicariously enjoy watching him do that. But I keep thinking that even just doing that, it's like a covert way of still maintaining the illusion, right? That it's still, I'm still scratching an itch somewhere. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know if other people do that too. I, they probably do. But um, And then I get into a bargaining position with myself. Well, what if I'm aware, but I'm still scratching that itch? What if I enjoy this, mm -hmm. but I know that it's all just an illusion? But then I wonder whether I'm just <laughs> rationalizing that and still tricking myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I can take your answer or your response to this offline, but I just wanted to explore with you and see what you had to say about that. I'm a little bit disturbed because now I have to out myself too. <laughs> yeah. So I do the same thing. This is a passion play. And what you're pointing to is that if you have some sense that there's an injustice or a lack of empathy or a dominance that doesn't feel resonant for you and your late night hosts are being the champion your voice, there being the voice uh, that you feel points to this discrepancy or this imbalance or this experience that feels like it is not aligned with love, not aligned with your values, not aligned with your values of, and when I talk about values, it's a whole nother that's a big topic, but your values, your in your sense of love, because that's what I know you to be very aligned with, Dolph. 
So if your alignment with love, with grace, with, with uh, compassion feels like it is being challenged, it is being subverted out in the world, and these late night hosts are the champion of, of speaking tr truth to power, let's say, that's gonna feel good. For me, I can get caught up in that and, and it becomes a battle and it becomes a winning and losing. And if we lose, I'm gonna, I, there's a sense of being destroyed. There's a sense of my smallness, my sense of separation, losing to this other power. And if I'm only in the emotional experience, then it's going to feel like a win-lose proposition. When we can pull back from the experience, which is happening, if we can pull back from the experience a bit, and again, feel into this vast, unmoving grace of consciousness, within which this experience is unfolding and changing and shifting and moving. If we can pull back into that grace of being, then perhaps we can attend to and be in and experience the experience from an unmoving imperishable, not threatened, peace. And not that this life isn't precious and we all want to be present in it as vitally and as long as and as engaged as we can be. But truly, if it, if it all ends today, we're fine. So our mortality very much gets pulled into play as well. And where and that is happening. Our mortality is coming and going and arising and passing within something larger, something greater, something imperishable, something enduring that we are. So I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, I experienced that too. And I'm just recognizing, yeah, it just feels like there's some truth, some love being spoken to what feels to me in my soul incarnation to be a darkness. But if I don't pull back and remember grace, love, God consciousness as an embodied experience of that's really what's going on here. The experiences come and go, but the grace remains. If I don't pull back and remember that, then I just get pulled purely into the experience. And that's where the problems occur is when we are only in the experience and we only see the experience and we don't see or witness or abide or recognize or allow or awaken the consciousness within which all experience is happening. Thank you, Dolph. Beautiful question. Thank you everyone for being here. This is good. This is, uh, we can be at peace, we really can. We can be at peace with the parts of us that don't feel at peace. Thank you for being champions of, of, of truth and love and, and finding your grace. Our grace, the grace and, and being willing to look and explore within. And, and I'll kind of leave us with this. Just let's all take this opportunity to notice when we are agitated 
and that agitation wants to lead to an immediate response, to let that agitation instead point us to stillness so that we might self-reflect within and say, what is agitated? And own it. Oh, that's my fear. That's, that's my sense of separation. That's my sense of smallness. That's my individuality that feels fearful. Do I want to act from that? No, I don't. I don't want to act from that. I want to act from what I really am and not the transit experience of the egoic identity. So all these opportunities to feel triggered is an, everything, everything is an opportunity to see if we can love deeper. Everything is an opportunity to see if we can find and access and rest in the grace of love that we are. As Ram Das said, everything on your plate is the stuff for your enlightenment everything. And enlightenment, oh, Rupert was talking about this last night, just this last minute. Uh, enlightenment isn't anything special. Awakening isn't anything special. It's just what we are recognizing itself. Seeing through the illusion, seeing through the experience, seeing through the, the, the mind stories and thoughts and judgments and opinions and constructs and, and conditioning and programming, that that is all happening within pure consciousness. Awakening is just what we are coming online, becoming aware of itself. It's not a huge special thing. It's just, oh, that's what I am. Oh, that's, oh, that's the nature of being. Oh, and I'm that. Oh, there's that. Oh, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. But it doesn't have to be this big explosive aha thing. It can just be a beautiful recognition of self, awakening, true self, awakening to itself. Hmm. Blessings all. Um, thank you, Dolph. If, uh, if anyone would like to make any donation, there's some links in the chat box to do so. No obligation. It's an opportunity. You know, satsangs are often held in a donation basis of just offering out into the world. And if there's the ability, then it's certainly welcome. Um, and it's not, uh, it's not expected by any means. Much love. And um, I, this, this, by the way, this format might start to switch up. I'm going to start doing live satsangs here in my house again with proper social distancing. Um, and if I do, I'm, I'm looking for a platform and I don't know what it is yet, webcast or um, different ways to be able to uh, broadcast and take questions while at the same time doing this, maybe outside of the Zoom platform. So um, so I'll, I'll let you know how that all unfolds and thank you, blessings. And uh, let's all just let that God consciousness descend from separation into our ground of being to recognize that is us and then love and act and explore and engage from there. Blessings all. Beautiful. <laughs>